Hello folks, Austin Powers here. Um, so today I have a special video. I have, I'm showing you my entire game collection for my next gen consoles. So I'm not showing my Wii collection because it's pretty small and I don't ever play Wii. Um, but um, it's going to go from my, out of the games I have currently from worst to best. This is not my top games. Um, th these are going to be in order, but there are games out there that I like better than games in here, and there are games in here that I like better than games out there. That So the list isn't perfect. There are plenty of games that I don't have in this list that um, I think are really great games. So the first one is uh, Naruto Rise of a Ninja. So this is my least favorite game out of what I have right now. Um, so this game was um, actually kind of fun, um, but I, and I was really a huge fan of Naruto, the, the anime series, um, as like uh, books for a little while, and that's when I got this game, and I really enjoyed it. But um, I soon was kind of haunted by the fact that it was a really, 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 really repetitive game. And frankly, it had a lot, a lot of fetch quests, and the combat got really stale and boring, and just didn't, didn't meet my needs when it came to gaming. So I quickly put this one down, and even though I was a fan of the series. Um, the next game... It was Just Cause 2. Now, I was really excited for this game, and I wanted it to be really good. I, I, I really wanted this game to be so good, and I wanted that so bad, because I actually really enjoyed the first one just for the fa fact that you could do whatever you want. And I really enjoyed this one, too, because you could do whatever you want. But the gameplay, again, was really, really repetitive. Um, the story mode was, you know, somewhat quick. And then afterwards, mercenary mode, like, showed you the percentage of the game you complete, and you'd explode a barrel, and it'd go up by, like, 0 .05, and you'd just feel like everything you did didn't, didn't do shit for, like, your, your progress, and kind of felt like a, um, a lost cause to keep pursuing that 75% trophy for a, a gold, and it, I don't know, it just got boring. So, yeah. I might have to split this video into two parts. Next, Skate 3. Now, this game... This game was pretty good. Um, I have to say, I enjoyed this game. There was nothing really wrong with it, except for the fact that, um, again, just like the other two skate games and a lot of the games on the lower end of this list, or the, these couple games on the lower end of this list, it got boring quickly. Uh, well, actually, not quickly. It got boring after a little while. Um, but it, this did have the Create a Park feature, which I really enjoyed doing, and I created some pretty amazing parks. and. Um, overall, I really actually enjoyed this game. It's just that it didn't have enough content for me to truly embrace it. Okay, next. This is, might be com com come as a surprise to some people. This is so low on the list, but Fallout New Vegas. Now, I played Fallout 3, um, and um, I also am I'm now currently playing this and Fallout 3, and I have to say, whenever I switch over to Fallout 3, I... I feel like I like it better. I this game is just not as it's not as good. It's a little bit more glitchy. The story's not as intriguing and doesn't feel as personal as in Fallout Three. I mean, you're looking for your dad in Fallout Three, and then here you're just looking for the guy that shot you. And you know, halfway through the game, you find him, and then that's it. You know, and there's a ton of other story that's really boring. Um, and also, this is way more glitchy, and the graphics haven't changed that much. Just just not not good enough to reach the high spots on my list. Um. So, as it comes to no surprise, next is Fallout 3, because they are so similar. Um, this is not including DLC. This is, I'm re judging this game on the list, other like, separate from its DLC, because this list is a list of games without DLC, just the retail games themselves. Um, so, you know, uh, the, this one had a more personal story, it was less glitchy, and overall I enjoyed it more, but still, not my most praised game, I guess. Um... Next, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Um, so this game was really good, actually. But I did have kind of a problem with the um, the controls with it. Um, I, it felt a little bit, um, not clunky, but like a little bit too smooth and slow for me. I, it was a little bit, and I was so used to the like kind of twitchy gameplay, and I even like Halo's controls better than this. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's interesting, but not, but and then the story mode was just not good enough, and since they, they just released Onslaught mode, which is awesome, but again, I'm not rating these games for what they've gotten in DLC. Um, so, yeah. Next, we have uh, this is one of my favorite games. This is Little Big Planet. Um, this game was really cool, and this did. I was playing this for a really, really long time. I did not, like, you know, just give up and, and get bored of it. Like, most 
other games that are on the lower end of this list. Um, this game was really awesome. I finished the single player campaign pretty quickly, um, and I just dived into the, the creation, because I love creation in any game. Like, that's like, yeah, you put that in the game, it's pretty much sold for me. Um, and I really loved this game, and the fact that you could share and play other people's levels, and I mean, the only problem with it was that the online levels were all like, you know, uh, full. Oh, and I'm not judging the the extra content that came in here. Don't worry. The the all the a lot of the levels online when you would find top levels were all like get this trophy, get this trophy, get done to credit free. And I hate when those are just spammed and full. And uh, the same level would have been made copyable, and then so twenty thousand people have it to try to just get things. And yeah, that was my only problem with this game. Okay, next. Uh, now this game I got for the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. I returned it in a, a long time ago, and then I got it for the PS3 again, um, so I could get some DLC playthrough, because I never finished the full game when I got on 360, and get the play as a Joker, and I'm happy I did, because I've been enjoying this game a lot, um, and playing as a Joker is really in cha challenging, but I can't judge that, because this is a non-DLC review list of the games I currently have. Um, I haven't played this for a little while, but um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I suggest that if you haven't played it, you pick it up, whether you're a Batman fan or not. Even if you're not really an action fan when it comes to video games, it's a really good game. Um, it has, like, puzzles, like, little trivia things for the joke, um, the, uh, the Riddler, and lots of great action. And epic boss fights. Um, Call of Duty World at War. Now, the reason this isn't, l like, lower on my list than let's say, a little big planet, is because I really enjoy this game. I am not, uh, I, I didn't, like, a lot of people for some reason hated on this game so much. It really was not that bad. In fact, I enjoyed this, um, I, I still enjoy this right now, currently better than, I, I like it better than Modern Warfare 2 because it's, uh, well, it's a little bit less, um, what do you call it, uh, annoying, <laughs> but, um, I've been playing this a lot recently to kind of train myself for an upcoming Call of Duty Black Ops tournament to get the game for free, and um, I really enjoy this game. Um, it's it's really challenging and has lots of fun elements and some really cool sections, and the multiplayer is pretty top notch. So pick this up if you haven't picked this up. This is totally worth it. Um, next we have Halo Reach. Now this this game was worth more than its price. This came with basically three games. It came with the campaign, which was incredible, pretty long, and really awesome. It came with multiplayer, which is just out of this world amazing. Like, this, like, full of game types and different things you can do. And, and then, and then it came with Firefight, and that was fully customizable. This game was jam-packed with content. And not only that, but all the content was great and improved from the previous Halo games. If you have not picked up this game, you need to pick it up right now. Next is Modern Warfare 2. So I did say I like uh, Call of Duty World at War currently better than Modern Warfare 2, but overall, I did prefer this game um, because of its single-player campaign and Spec Ops. That's why this is winning the bet. Um, Spec Ops was a lot of fun. I have a friend who comes over pretty much like three times a week. He's Liam. He's been in a couple of my videos. And we play this. Uh, we played this, actually, a lot. Um, the multiplayer is pretty tight, but it got really, really, really newbie and gl glitchy and full of hacks and mods and stupid stuff really late on really late and it started to piss me off so I stopped playing that but the single player campaign was absolutely awesome and spec ops was amazing so that's why this is um, higher than Call of Duty World at War um, so next we have this is I actually don't have the case for this because I got it pretty recently um, the the original Bioshock so I'm, I'm not even gonna put this out, out here but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit so this game is full of these incredible supernatural powers called plasmids an awesome storyline um, and the environment in this game is just the atmosphere is incredible it's like nothing you've ever seen before in a game and if you have not experienced it like I looked at this game and I wasn't interested I picked it up just for the sake that there was a promo at GameStop and oh my god I was immediately blown away I finished the campaign and I played it again just because I wanted to see the whole thing happen again this, the sound in this game, the music, the environment, it's just such an incredible game, and the gameplay, of course, is awesome, and it has some pretty cool RPG elements in it as well. That needs to be picked up right now. If you have money, or uh, even if you don't, uh, you need to get a hold of this game. Uh, right now, it is currently only $15 at GameStop. Go get it right now if you haven't yet. Um, 
Next up, we have Red Dead Redemption. So, um, this game was a ton of fun, and I didn't feel so attached to the main character throughout the game, um, even though he's a pretty likable guy, and, but then at the end of the game, um, something happened that really, like, kind of made me feel this stronger sympathy for him, and, um, the game changed in some way, which I'm not going to give away because of spoilers, and, I couldn't. I didn't play it as much because it didn't feel the same. It didn't have that same feel that it did before. Um, it had changed because when you finish the game, it, it changes and it goes into sort of what was mercenary mode for um, um, just cause two, and it just wasn't the same. I didn't play it as much, but I, I probably will be picking up the DLCs. But again, I'm not reviewing DLCs in this video. So overall, this game was really good. Great gameplay, awesome atmosphere, um, and some really hilarious moments and. Uh, just great free roam features. If you haven't picked this up yet, you definitely should. Another great uh, don't miss game. So this game, yeah, this game gets a lot of praise, and um, it's probably not a surprise that this is um, top on my list of games I currently have right now. Um, this is this game. I haven't even finished the single player campaign. I kind of have been playing it li bit by bit to kind of like savor it. Because every time I pick it up, I play about like three or four levels and then I turn it off because I don't want it to all go by in a breeze. It is so good. Um, the multiplayer is okay. It's like, it's fun. It's definitely fun. It'll last you for a while. And if you're one of those people who like really enjoys it, you might end up, you might up end up being your like next favorite multiplayer game, but that's probably pretty rare. But this game has a great story and the characters in this game are so good and the voice acting is awesome. And it's full of great puzzles, incredible set piece moments and mind-blowing graphics get this game now top on my list this is uh, although this is my list of games I currently have this is my favorite game of all time um, so far I I have played through this game about 10 times now um, and it, every time I play it it just blows me away and I have so much fun and I can't put it down Mass Effect 2 this game is incredible you have no idea. If you played the first one, it'll enhance your second this, your experience with the second game, but even if you haven't, this game is not just a game. It is an incredible story. It is a it is a work of art. It is a an, it's an experience. It is this is just I there aren't enough words to explain how amazing this game is. And not only is its graphics, gameplay, and all those kind of like shenanigans that people judge on it great. But you feel so connected to this this guy, Commander Shepard, and his fight, and uh, it's amazing. This game is something that you have to experience, and if you haven't, even if you're not a fan of the first Mass Effect, which I really wasn't that big of a fan of, and even if you aren't a fan of shooters, action games, RPGs, you, you must play this game. You must. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to Bioware, you owe it to EA, you owe it to the world to experience this game. Anyways, thank you for watching. That was my current game collection in order of uh, worst to best. Um, this is Austin Powers, um, and please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.